Need for Speed Unbound brings with it a lot of new features and a whole new campaign structure, and in my time playing, I've picked up a lot of tricks and ways to maximize income, deal with high heat levels, and be faster on the streets of Lakeshore. This video will not contain any story spoilers, but will dive into a few more mid to late game mechanics. So here is everything I wish I knew before playing Need for Speed Unbound. For starters, Unbound's handling tuning is car specific, and you can switch between brake or gas to drift, or turn it off completely. When you pick up a new ride, make sure you head into the handling menu and tweak things to your liking. It's nice for example to leave gas or brake to drift on in your drift builds for higher speed entries, and keep them off your grip focused setups to have more control and consistency. And on that note, side tip, grip is viable in Unbound, but it does depend on the car. Some will just not react well to grip tuning and will understeer like a pig. Pay attention to the car's default place on the slider. If it's more towards drift and you try to make a grip build, you might not have a lot of luck. Some cars are faster with a more middle of the road setup, and some are much faster on full grip. If you're looking for a great grip car, either of the Lotuses are a strong pick. You will not have access to performance mods until you beat the prologue of the story, so feel free to spend your money on things like clothes at this point. You'll know when the prologue ends and you unlock the full customization. Unbound's campaign is all about managing your income though, so make sure you aren't too frivolous with your spending early on, or you could end up in a tight spot with a car that isn't fast enough to win races. Focus on bringing one car to the top of its class, instead of buying up multiple. You don't need to win every race, but especially with some of the bigger buy-ins, it sure helps, and make sure you're putting down side bets on every race you enter to maximize your income. If you're finding yourself just over the class limit with a car, try tweaking the downforce. Turning it up will often lower your performance points by a few notches because it lowers your top speed. You can also utilize this tactic to make more money. The amount of money you can side bet is dependent on your performance versus your opponents. So the worse the game thinks your car is, the more money you can get by beating what the game thinks are faster drivers. So turning your downforce up might not negatively affect your car's speed much at all, but it can heavily influence the amount of money you can make on side bets. Speaking of making money, don't forget about the open world challenges. You can make tens of thousands of dollars just by completing these, and they don't raise your heat level at all. So if you need money without wanting to take on any risk, start your day by just cruising the open world, finding hidden bears, billboards, and doing PR stunts on zero heat. And by the way, for the curious among you, if you do manage to make it to the qualifier at the end of the week without enough money for the buy-in, the game will just let you restart on Friday morning, but you will need to come up with all the money that day, so it's best to come prepared. If you end up losing the qualifier and feel like you need to change your car up before jumping back in, you can also reset to Friday after a lost qualifier race instead of burning up your limited daily restarts. If you find yourself heading to an event and get a call for a mission, know that you have the whole session to complete that mission. It won't go away if you don't immediately accept it. Instead, it will remain as an icon on your map, and you can choose to do it at any point during that session. And here's another great tip for the high heat delivery missions that rewards you based on how undamaged the car is. You can still use gas stations to heal up during these missions, so escape from the pursuit first, then find a gas station before turning the car in for that sweet pristine bonus. Also, if you're used to Need for Speed Heat and its limited gas station usage, Unbound instead only time limits you. You can use a gas station to heal as many times as you want during a session, but you now have to wait at least 4 minutes between stops. You also don't have to do the safe house pickup missions to get all the safe houses. If you miss any, just search for the character that called you in the rivals menu of a meetup and you can buy access to their safe house right there. If you're in a police chase and want an easy out, know that you can enter meetups or safe houses while you're in cooldown. This is especially helpful when trying to escape at high heat levels. Just keep the pursuit going near any meetup point, and as soon as you get into the cooldown phase, fly into that garage and the pursuit will end. You may find that you're getting in a lot of unwanted pursuits, and especially mid to late game, you'll be risking a lot of money towards the end of each night, so here's a nearly surefire way to end your nights safely. Make your last event of the session a takeover, head-to-head, -head, or drift. 
Unlike races, these will never spawn cops, so when you finish the event, you won't be jumped right into a pursuit. It is then much easier to play it safe on your way to a safe house. Which, by the way, you can auto GPS yourself to the nearest one by hitting left and down on the D-pad. To add to this tip, buy the Undercover Racer Auxiliary Upgrade as soon as you can. This doubles the amount of time it takes for a cop to spot you, meaning you can drive right past them even at high heat levels when they spot you sooner, and as long as you're going at a decent speed, they won't even bother to start a chase. Having this auxiliary equipped alongside ending my nights with takeovers or other safe events means that I almost never get into pursuits I don't want to be in. I find the cops to be a bit easier here in Unbound than they were in Heat, but also less exploitable. They follow you better off jumps, and you can't escape by just diving into water anymore. So instead, the name of the game is keeping things dynamic and using your surroundings to your advantage. You can often go for a last minute highway exit to throw them off and get them stuck behind a barrier, or if you're near the city, they do tend to get caught up by traffic and other obstacles, so keep dodging and weaving, and they'll often start to fall back and lose you. There are a couple go-to spots still though that people have found, the best I've used being the storm drain, where you won't be seen by the chopper at all, and the AI often ends up crashing if they manage to chase you in. The extra nice thing about this area is that there's even a meetup here, so you can dive into the garage as soon as you enter cooldown. You can also sometimes get away from pursuit vehicles by finding an elevated spot of the map like the train tracks, and know that even if the chopper is onto you, it will eventually run out of fuel and have to leave. Moving on from pursuits, if you want a quick boost of speed from a dead stop, do a burnout. This quickly fills all three stacks of your burst nitrous and fills your main tank a bit as well, giving you a huge boosted launch. Super helpful for entering open world challenges at higher speeds without a big run up. Also, on the topic of nitrous, make sure you're keeping an eye on those burst tanks. It goes away quickly, so if you don't use it right away, you're wasting that burst of speed. It's also very easy to build through drafting, even from a pretty far distance, and you can even draft police cars. Near misses are another great way to build burst, and that even works on parked traffic. Staying on the topic of nitrous, you can tap your NOS button to maintain a combo, which is super helpful for staying in that 5x multiplier during drift events and takeovers. When deciding what races to do for events that reward cars, pay attention to the buy-in and payout. Many of these are really just cheaper ways to get cars, because you'll still be paying the whole buy-in and you won't get that money back even if you win. There are some exceptions though where you'll get the car plus some cash on top. These are generally always worth it. Another tip for picking events is to make sure you look at the payout for second, third, and so on. Sometimes it is only worth it to finish in first, and if you aren't confident about a win, it might be worth it to choose another race. Your top rivals will always be towards the top of their car class, so if you're sitting more in the middle of a class, don't expect to win, especially on higher difficulties. And just to kind of add to this, make sure you get your car to the top of its class as soon as possible. It often isn't worth using a car to race if it's only in the lower or middle half of the class. This is of course only if you play on a difficulty that's more challenging for you. So stay in your lower class cars until you have the money to upgrade your other builds near the top of their respective class. The AI will not adjust their level to you. In Need for Speed Unbound, you can also control cars mid-air, so use this to get a better landing off your jumps. It seriously really does help. Now changing gears and heading back into the garage, Unbound sadly still does not have any wheel spacing options, but different tires will change the fitment a bit. So if you just want a little bit more track width, changing to a different tire is your best bet. On this note, many cars will hit their minimum height before the slider reaches the minimum, instead just continuing to camber out the wheels. If you want less camber, you can often raise the car back up a bit without actually raising the chassis. Keep in mind that part upgrades cannot be sold or traded between cars in Unbound, like you could do in Heat. There's no part inventory here. Once you buy it, it's unlocked for that car alone, and that engine, so be confident with what you want to upgrade. If you're looking for the most power on a budget, the ECU and fuel system usually add the most power. If you're looking to unlock more of the handling slider, make sure you upgrade suspension as well as your differential. You may see when upgrading tires that you aren't getting access to as much of the slider as you should be. 
This usually means you need to upgrade your suspension in order to unlock that extra bit of the bar. Finally, you cannot fully disable the effects in Unbound, at least not right now, but you can mostly turn them off. Run the cloaked tag set to get rid of just about everything save for the tire smoke. And that is just about everything I've got for you. If you made it to the end of this video and have some other good tips to share, please drop them in the comments. And for anyone looking for more advice, go ahead and check out the comments. I'll try to thumbs up and heart all the ones that I think are helpful. So everyone, I hope this video helped and I'll see you in the next one. Thanks for watching.